after studying this module you shall be able to know people's experiences when they share their traumatic events by talking or writing learn the various outcomes of sharing one's traumatic experiences and evaluate the research done in this area there are various psychological factors that operate when individuals cope with major emotional upheaval individual may delve into the problem in their own way some may simply shrug it off and move on others may talk about the event in detail for several days or weeks before getting on with their lives only a minority perhaps about 20 to 30% continue to suffer from the trauma for considerably long periods of time it has been argued that the self disclosure of upsetting experiences serves as a basic human motive according to ryan over 95% of emotional experiences are shared within the same day of occurrence usually within a few hours but few of the experiences such as failure or other secrets that may hold us are difficult to express is it possible that not talking about emotional upheavals can have adverse effects if so would people who are encouraged to talk or write about these secrets improve in mental and physical health the potentiality of translating emotional experiences into words has been extensively explored for almost two decades not expressing and talking about important emotional events engages powerful negative changes in us however by constructing stories through writing or talking these dynamics can be reversed putting emotional upheavals into words for one of the studies by pen baker that were conducted students were brought into the laboratory and told they would be participating in an experiment to learn about writing and psychology they were instructed to write about an assigned topic for 15 minutes daily over four consecutive days participants were assured that their writing would be anonymous and that they would not receive any feedback the only rule about the writing assignment was that once they began writing they were to continue to do so without stopping without regard to spelling grammar or sentence structure participants were then randomly assigned to either an experimental or a control group one group was encouraged to delve into their emotions and the other to describe objects and events dispassionately those assigned to the experimental group were asked to spend each daily session writing about one or more traumatic experience in their lives for the next 4 days they were asked to write their deepest of feelings and thoughts about their most traumatic experiences of life those in the control group were asked to write about non emotional topics the most profound result of these writing studies was people seemingly intuitive drive to disclose participants in the experimental group enjoyed the writing process and found it to be extremely valuable and meaningful most surprising were the painful array of tragic and depressing stories about which these predominantly upper middle class college students wrote the physiological long term effects beginning at least 2 weeks after the studies were overwhelmingly valuable participants in the experimental group had significantly reduced number of physician visits in the next year in comparison 
allergen to those in the control group. The immediate effects were not overtly positive. Many reported crying or being deeply upset by the experience. They felt distressed and unhappy as they re-experienced the negative emotions again. Similar beneficial outcomes have been found for participants in the writing about trauma condition as measured by basic biological processes related to immune functioning. Of positive influences on behavior including increases in job offers received by a group of engineers after a massive layoff and increases in grades for incoming college students. Let us now look at the components of not disclosing trauma. Even though writing or talking about traumatic events has so many benefits, many people are reluctant to do it. There are many reasons for it. First is the role of inhibition. Initially, it was thought that not talking about emotional upheavals was ultimately unhealthy. Not expressing about thoughts, feelings and behavior linked to emotional upheaval is a form of inhibition. It is actually a form of physiological work reflected in autonomic and central nervous system activity. Inhibition acts as a general stressor that can cause or exacerbate psychosomatic processes and thereby lead to long-term health problems. Reducing inhibition as a strategy to improve health have been demonstrated by studies showing that both informal confiding and confiding in professionals through psychotherapy subsequently reduced illness. Second is the role of cognitive processes. The cognitive roots of the paradigm are related to gestalt psychologists views on perception. When individuals experience trauma, they temporarily become disconnected from their self or identity. This disconnection is exacerbated by the inhibition of the thoughts and feelings surrounding this emotional upheaval. Gestalt views represent our innate need to integrate the various facets of an event into a more coherent whole. An artifact of our world is the anxiety of not attaining completion and not understanding a simple cause and effect explanation for traumatic disturbances. Zygonics and Freud's and more recent research findings suggest that individuals tend to ruminate, talk and dream about things that are not resolved in their minds or about tasks that are not completed. Because we are motivated to complete our goal-related thoughts, these thoughts remain active when the task cannot be finished or resolved. Furthermore, the more one tries to suppress these thoughts, paradoxically, the more frequent will they intrusively return to mind according to Wagner. Research in narrative psychology suggests that we make sense of our lives by putting them into story-like format according to Nehemiah and Stewart. Constructing a story facilitates a sense of resolution that gives individuals a sense of predictability and control over their lives, allowing them to be in sync with their core selves. Through language, individuals can give structure to their experiences. An individual can create a coherent narrative which once formed can be summarized, stored and ultimately forgotten. Works in narrative psychology suggest that we use a self-narrative to account for the critical events in our lives.
according to Gurgan and Gurgan. The beauty of the narrative is that it allows us to tie all the changes in our life together into a broad comprehensive story. Third is the importance of social dynamics. This involves social repercussions which have been described by Imal Dukai. An inherent benefit of forming a narrative involves being able to translate one's story into a language that is both understandable and communicable. Not being able to express one's emotional upheavals disconnects people from their social world. No matter what reason a person does not disclose, keeping a secret detaches one from the society. Suppressing thoughts on a daily basis is a large cognitive overload, making it difficult to organize thoughts about the event and to make sense of what happened. Thus, the keeper of the secret will be more guarded and the surrounding people who will be unaware of the individual thoughts and feelings cannot offer sympathy or help. As a result, the individual becomes isolated as Durkheim describes it as less socially integrated. Social integration is one of the keys to both psychological and physical health. Durkheim argued that the less socially integrated people were, the more likely they were to commit suicide. Others have demonstrated that feelings of loneliness and isolation are associated with more health problems. On the other hand, social integration is conceptualized as a sense of belonging, cohesion, confidence and security with others. It also incorporated the sense of coherence that one obtains in creating a synchrony in behaviors, beliefs and language both within individuals and with their social groups. Let us now understand the different historical backgrounds. First, research on inhibition and disclosure. People who do not confide have greater risk for both major and minor health problems. In the earlier researches, it was found that out of approximately 24,000 respondents to a survey in a popular magazine, 22% of females and 11% of males reported that they had a traumatic sexual experience prior to age 17. These people also were more likely to have been diagnosed with cancer and to have high blood pressure, ulcers and flu according to Ben Baker. Subsequent studies have established that regardless of the type of trauma experience, whether or not the trauma has been discussed strongly impacts health. Furthermore, the mechanism of disinhibition as the link between the disclosing of traumas and improved health was investigated. For this, the previously discussed writing paradigm was used in which participants wrote consistently for 15 minutes daily over four consecutive days. Writing about the traumas produced increased health benefits as compared with controls in a variety of more recent studies. Researchers have shown that simply writing about one's thoughts and feelings about coming to college or about the experience of getting laid off in the case of unemployed engineers produced comparable good health outcomes. Similarly, when students were asked to write about imaginary traumas as though they lived through them, 
they evidence similar health benefits as compared with individuals who wrote about their own trauma. The venting of emotions per se appears insufficient in the absence of cognitive processing. Although such venting may bring about subjective improvements and self-reports of improved mental health, health gains appear to require the translating of one's experiences into language. Let us now understand the long-term benefits of expressive writing. Many types of benefits of expressive writing have been noted in various domains. First are health outcomes, which are fewer stress-related visits to the doctor, improved immune system functioning, reduced blood pressure, improved lung function, improved liver function, fewer days in hospital, improved mood or affect, feelings of greater psychological well-being, reduced depressive symptoms before examinations, and fewer post-traumatic intrusion and avoidance symptoms. Second are the social and behavioral outcomes, which include reduced absenteeism from work, quicker re-employment after job loss, improved working memory, improved sporting performance, higher student grade point average, and altered social and linguistic behavior. Let us now look at the self-reported emotional health outcomes. Some studies have also found longer-term benefits of expressive writing for emotional health outcomes including mood and affect by Penn, Baker, Paziol, etc. The psychological well-being, depressive symptoms before examinations, and post-traumatic intrusion and avoidance symptoms. Expressive writing was found to be beneficial for females writing about body image, children of alcoholics, caregivers of children with chronic illness, and individuals who had experienced bereavement. A meta-analysis of 13 studies using expressive writing with healthy participants by Smith found a significant overall benefit and specific benefits in objective or self-reported physical health, psychological well-being, physiological functioning and general functioning outcomes. This review suggests that for physically and psychologically healthy individuals, the effects produced by expressive writing are substantial. These are also similar in magnitude to the effects of other psychological interventions. In clinical populations, a meta-analysis by Frisina A. All of nine expressive writing studies also found a significant benefit for health. Although when analyzed separately the effects for physical health outcomes in medically ill populations were significant, but those for psychological health outcomes in psychiatric populations were not. This meta-analysis suggests that expressive writing has positive effects in clinical populations. In a study by Smith A. All, 107 asthma and rheumatoid arthritis patients wrote for 20 minutes on three consecutive days. 71 of them wrote about the most stressful event of their lives and the rest about the emotionally neutral subject of their daily plans. 
four months after the writing exercise, 70 patients in the stressful writing group showed improvement on objective clinical evaluations compared with 37 of the control patients. In addition, those who wrote about stress improved more and deteriorated less than controls for both diseases. Penn Baker and others found a similar pattern among HIV AIDS patients. The researchers asked 37 patients in four 30-minute sessions to write about negative life experiences or about their daily schedule. Afterward, patients who wrote about life experiences measured higher on CD4 lymphocyte counts, which is a gauge of immune functioning, than did the control. Ben Baker says that by writing, you put some structure and organization to those anxious feelings. It helps you to get past them. Suppressing negative trauma-related thoughts compromises immune functioning and that those who write visit the doctor less often. Writing right. Psychologist Helen Marlowe states that contrary to Penn Baker's results, writing about negative and positive life events produced no physical health benefits in undergraduate students. Her study did not, however, provide evidence that writing poses any long-term risk to people. It has been found that the nature of a person's writing is a key factor in its health effects. Lutzkendorf suggests that people who relive upsetting events without focusing on meaning report poorer health than those who derive meaning from the writing. They even fare worse than people who write about neutral events. Those who focus on meaning develop greater awareness of positive aspects of a stressful event. A changed perspective is also reflected in the language people use. For example, the more they use such cause and effect words as because, realize, understand, the more they appear to benefit. Ben Baker also states that some personality types are likely to respond better to writing than others. For instance, reticent people benefit most. Other individual differences such as handling of stress, ability to self-regulate and interpersonal relations also mediate writing effectiveness. Let us now look at the mechanisms by which expressive writing works. There could be several explanations for the benefits of talking or writing about traumatic emotional experiences. First is emotional catharsis. Expressive writing helps in releasing bottled up emotions related to the traumatic incident. Second, Confronting previously inhibited emotions. Expressive writing may help an individual confront their previously inhibited emotions. Third, cognitive processing. Expressive writing facilitates the development of a coherent narrative which helps to reorganize and structure traumatic memories resulting in more adaptive internal schemas and last repeated exposure it could be that repeated exposure may lead to extinction of negative emotional responses to traumatic memories to summarize what we have learnt in this module the potentiality of translating emotional experiences into words 
has been extensively explored for almost two decades. Experiments conducted by Penn Baker demonstrated the benefits of writing about traumatic emotional events. The main components of not disclosing about trauma include the role of inhibition, cognitive processes and social dynamics. The long-term benefits of expressive writing include better physical and emotional health and better social and behavioral outcomes. The kind of language used has a lot of influence on whether writing will be beneficial or not. The mechanisms by which expressive writing works are emotional catharsis, confronting previously inhibited emotions, cognitive processing and repeated exposure.